How are you doing, Klosh? Everyone's awake? Okay, it's free. Take a nap. It's okay. It's okay. I don't mind. Because this talk is actually about sleeping. Um, so it's more than okay for you to take a nap. Uh, I've seen some of you were on a party yesterday. I was on a speaker's dinner. It was wild. I had two beers. So, <laughs> in any case, uh, let's jump right in. My name is Tomasz Wakome. I work as a senior front-end engineer at Olex Group. You can find me on Twitter at uh, Telakome. And Olex Group is the biggest online company you've never heard of, probably. But if you are from Romania, you probably heard about this. Uh, so this is Olex uh, Romania, uh, the biggest marketplace in this country and also one of the biggest uh, websites when it comes to uh, visits in Romania. But I don't mention that because I want to talk about myself. I mention that because we, as a company, we run a large number of different websites, and we want to make sure that whatever we are pushing out there uh, actually works and gives value to our users. And this is why I'm here to talk about Cypress. But first, let's talk a bit about you, because there's only one of me, and there's 500 of you. So it kind of makes sense to focus on the majority instead of talking about this uh, dude on stage. So I have a question for you. Why are you afraid of pushing stuff to production on a Friday? <laughs> Why is that? What's the difference between Tuesday and a Friday when it comes to releases? So I had no idea. I asked a team of elite scientists, and this is what they came up with. So um, basically, if you release something on Friday, you are 100%, 120% sure that it's going to break. Thursday, 95%. Of course, this is not true, but this is what we feel as developers. And honestly, since we talk uh, uh, quite a lot at this conference about mental health, it, it is important for us to feel safe. And I truly mean it, like mental health is uh, absolutely important. So we must feel safe that whatever we are pushing out there gives value to our users, works, we can go home, and we don't have to debug production issues on Saturday. So how do we do that? Well, there are numerous approaches, right? We can have 100% unit test coverage. Uh, but it's not ideal. <laughs> if you have 100% test coverage, uh, you can have bugs still. And honestly, you shouldn't aim for 100% coverage. If you have 100% coverage, it's not a good idea. Um, so more and more engineering teams are focusing on automation uh, because automated tests allows you to test your app exactly as the user interacts with it. Because users don't care about your unit tests. Users don't care. Users want to be able to log in, to buy something, to sell something, to tweet, to watch a movie. This is what they care about, not uh, the fact that you have 80% unit test coverage. So automated tests, uh, they've been around for quite some time. They allow you to you know, uh, do some stuff, log in, and uh, so on, click on the buttons uh, as the user would. Uh, so I would like to give you some overview of the uh, tests in ancient times, so like early 2018, last year. I'm not sure if you remember, but we had 2018 at some point. Stability issues. As an engineer, I've been part of many engineering teams uh, so far in a couple of, of different companies, and in most of those teams, we attempted some sort of automated testing. And the common problem was stability. So we had tests that were passing on Monday, failing on Tuesday. Uh, some of those were like, related to the position between Saturn and Venus. If they're aligned, like, the test would pass. And this was simply not fun. Second, the tests were difficult to write and even harder to debug. So in some of the cases, you have to depend on logs. I mean, not like those, but you know, in Jenkins. So you have to scroll through gigabytes of logs to find that you miss a selector here and there. Again, not fun. And those two factors added to a complete distrust in automated tests in some of the teams I worked at. We had a large number of tests that no one cared about. They were constantly read, but we kept on pushing to production anyway because we had features to ship, and those tests are not stable anyway, so who cares? And this is terrible. Like this um, approach of automated tests are failing, like who cares? This is terrible because we've, we wasted so much time writing those tests and now no one cares about them. Our solution should be to have automated tests are failing. Woo! It should be an alarm. You know, like if those tests are failing, like the, literally like the doors to the office should be locked. You cannot go away until you fix your login page or whatever. Or better yet, you cannot do a release to production because then you are absolutely sure that you're going to break something. With Cypress, I strongly feel like things are different. Um, I don't work for Cypress, I work for OLX, but uh, we've adopted Cypress a year ago, and we are quite happy with it um, so far. Because as they say on the homepage, and it's a large font, so I do believe it, uh, the web has evolved and the testing has 
as well. So it, there are a couple of things that Cypress does really well. First off, there's no selenium, there's no, mad, uh, there's no magic. Because with, uh, with other solutions for automated tests, you had to use Selenium, which is a Java machine that's sending commands to your browser, and it adds a uh, large overhead, and it's not stable. It doesn't work more, most of the time. Also, you can debug exactly how you are used to. So you can use Chrome DevTools to debug your tests. So your current experience as a front-end engineer translates very nicely, because you don't have to learn new tools in order to get started with Cypress. For, next up, you have an uh, instant feedback loop. So basically, once you save a test, it's going to restart automatically, uh, so you don't have to restart the whole Java machine where, like, for two weeks for it to start. You just get in, uh, up and running. Tests are easy to write. It's just JavaScript. So if you know JavaScript, if you know DevTools, you just have to learn uh, the Cypress API, which is honestly well documented, and it's quite easy to get to. This is something that also is uh, in other solutions, but uh, with Cypress, you also get automatic screenshots and video recording, so you can see exactly where the tests uh, are going to fail. It doesn't make sense to talk about this stuff. It makes more sense to, to show it, and since I'm the one, first one to speak today, might as well break the first uh, live demo today. So, whoops. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, we are going to test this, uh, this to-do app. So I'm sure you've seen some of those. You can add an item, you can remove an item. And this is fairly simple stuff. But nevertheless, imagine this is a mission-critical app. You have to be absolutely sure that it works. You probably want to test before pushing a next version to production. OK, so uh, on the left side, uh, my Visual Studio Code. On the right, right hand side, you can see uh, Cypress UI running in the browser. So right now, I have a very complicated test. I'm testing whether true is equal to true. And it's true. If I change it to false and save it, the test is going to start automatically. True is not uh, e equal to false, which is, uh, which is failing. Change it to true again, the test is passing. So you can see how quickly uh, Cypress is going to reload those tests. You don't have to restart anything manually. You can just uh, get it to work. OK, let me write some tests. So the first thing I would like to do is to visit not crypto. God damn it, I don't want, no, no, I don't want any Bitcoin. How you interact with Cypress is the, through this global CY object. So uh, this is global. You can do CI visit, and I'm going to copy and paste this URL from here. Bang. After I save it, I'm going to visit uh, our home page. And there are a couple of interesting things here. So first off, this is fully interactive. So I can add something and remove something in the Cypress UI. This is highly useful, because sometimes when you develop your own tests, they sometimes end up in this very, very weird spot. For instance, you are somehow between uh, removing a tweet and adding it at the same time, and you will probably want to get in and debug what exactly is going on. And Cypress allows you to do that because it's fully interactive. Next up, if you click on a request, you can switch the state of your app before and after the request was sent, which allows you to very easily kind of go in, take a deep dive on what exactly is going on with my app and how the state of, uh, of the application is changed as I'm loading or performing some actions. Also, you get console log uh, driven debugging as well, because if you click on a request, Cypress is going to log out all kinds of useful info for you. So for instance, here I can see that this request has returned uh, free to-do items, which I'm displaying in the, in the UI. Cool. If you have a free to-do items, it would be kind of cool for me to test it. The way we test it is that we do CI get, and now we are using jQuery. OK, it's not exactly jQuery, but the selectors are exactly the same. Should um, have length of three. After I save that, there you go, we have a filing, uh, passing test. Can I go home now? No, because it's a terrible test. The reason why it's so terrible is that if someone were to do this, whoops, and after I restart the test, yeah, it's going to fail, uh, because I'm expecting three items and I have four. Okay, how do I, what do I do? What do I do? I want to go home. Okay, can I do this? <laughs> I mean, I can, right? <laughs> but um, this is, of course, this is terrible because someone can just remove something, add something. Uh, this is random. With automated tests, what we want to, do, to have is that we want to have a known state of the app at the start of the test and compare it to an expected output at the end of the test. So in other words, we would have to have a cont control over uh, what the server is returning. And we can actually do that. So 
I'm going to show you that you can start your own server with Cypress. I'm so good at live coding, I'm going to do it with one hand. So basically, once you have a, once you have a get request to API to do this, you, you can't do that? In case, once we have a, to the, a get request to API to do this, I would like to server to return those forward to the items instead. Let me save that. And right now, I'm going to have a passing test because I'm expecting four items, and I have four to the items over here. Fantastic. OK, but this copy and pasting this entire array, even if you are so good at live coding as I am, um, this is not something that you want to do. You probably want to define some fixtures in some, uh, in some file and use it instead of copying and pasting this array. And this is exactly what you can do. Uh, because Cypress allows you to have a couple of useful files. So, for instance, in, in fixtures, you can specify uh, basically like this uh, JSON file, and you can tell Cypress, all right, you know what? Instead of getting this array, what I would like to do is that if there is a request to this API to do this, just give me fixture to do this. This is a special syntax for Cypress that um, basically go into fixture directory and get me to do this. I don't care how, just do it. You will notice that this uh, also changed uh, because you don't have to copy and paste the URL to your like, development, staging, production, or whatever you have uh, environments. Instead, if you define in the config file what's the uh, main URL of your uh, production environment or your staging, then you can just uh, use the slash as your uh, home page. OK, let me, let me fail this test. You will notice it's not going to fail at an instant. Actually, it's going to wait some time. It waits for four seconds. Mostly because, uh, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but most of the apps are out there are kind of slow. So basically, Cypress is well, well aware of that, is that sometimes thing, things take time. So let's make it even worse. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to ensure that I'm fetching the items after five seconds. Let me uh, fix this test. And we started, and we have a problem. Because I want to have four items, but I'm sending the request to fetch them uh, after five seconds, which is like way too late. And sometimes you, you have that. Sometimes you have backends that can be slow. Sometimes uh, you have some animations that you would like to wait for, and some other stuff. And with Cypress, you can do totally that. So you can set an alias for requests. So henceforth, this request shall be known as load. And I'm going to wait for it. Load. After I save that, uh, Cypress is going to ensure that the response from this request came before we actually check whether we have four to do items or not. And this is highly useful. Of course, we don't want to wait forever. Uh, by default, Cypress allows you to wait for 20 seconds, because honestly, if something is not visible in 20 seconds, you probably want to fail the test anyway, because it's, <laughs> it's a terrible app and you shouldn't push it to production. OK, uh, this thing that we start a server, we specify some routes, visit the home page, wait, wait some, for something, and uh, this is probably stuff that you end up doing over and over again. It would be useful to have it as a single command. Uh, with Cypress, you can do that. Uh, there's a commands file where you can specify your own custom commands. So here I have this initialize app that is going to do exactly those four steps which I had uh, defined in the other file. And what's really cool, is that you can even, if you wanted to, you can compose uh, custom commands out of custom commands. But don't go too far, because I've seen some v very weird abstractions uh, when it comes to tests, and you shouldn't do that. Like Tests should be easy to read, easy to understand. If you want to have more abstractions, then learn Java, because this, but this is not the point. <laughs> OK, uh, let me show you something else. I'm going to copy and paste this bit, uh, because not everything always works. Right now, what I would like to test is that what happens if I want to add a new to-do whoopsie, uh, but the backend doesn't work. So I have a 500 empty response, everything is down. All right, so this is how you can type in a, in a field. So you get an input, you type some text. If you want to press the Enter key, you put it in the curly bracket. So this is a signal for Cypress that I would like to press this button. Uh, press the Enter key on, on, the, on your keyboard. And I'm expecting four to the items because I was not able to add this new one. And I also would like the error to be visible. And the best part, 
I didn't even have to read the code because I could just open the test and hover over those items as I go, and I can see the state of the app changing in real time. This is highly useful, and honestly, it's just fun to take a look at those. Uh, from my experience, I've seen people actually volunteering to write tests. It's, it's insane, but it actually happened. Like, I've seen people uh, volunteering because, honestly, with Cypress, we finally get to test our code and not our patience. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>